Am I grabbing you a stool? No, I'll, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, okay. Good morning. Um, like, uh, like many of you, I started going to the theater at a, a very young age, and then I acted in plays and musicals in high school, but I never took it seriously as a profession. Um, theater was just for fun. My idea of a profession was something that would help people in a much more direct way, like my dad, who was an old-fashioned family doctor who worked long hours taking care of uh, fairly poor patients. I started out myself pre-med in college. Uh, I eventually detoured to get a teaching degree. And then I decided to take a year off uh, to do some acting before plunging uh, full steam into a career in education. How many of you recognize this story? <laughs> uh, after nearly 40 years, I like to say that I'm still taking my year off. Um, but the flip side is that for 40 years, I've had this nagging feeling that I should, to be, should be doing something more worthwhile with my life than theater. Uh, and, and I think this struggle uh, to believe in the value and relevance of theater as compared with the alternative professions I left behind um, has played an important role in the evolution of Woolly Mammoth, uh, the theater I co-founded 34 years ago. So um, today I'd like to outline briefly how that struggle led us after many years to a strategy called connectivity, um, which is our most successful attempt so far, uh, I think, to make the case for the civic relevance of the work on our stage. I'll also share some of the basic principles of connectivity in hopes that they might be useful in your own work. So, okay, here's the quick background. It's uh, 1980, uh, Woolly Mammoth is launched after nearly three, three years of late night uh, conversations between myself and my friend Roger Brady uh, when we were fellow interns at the New Jersey Shakespeare Festival. I swear we were children. Um, the goal we shared together was basically to challenge ourselves and our audiences in order to push the field forward. Um, but we aim to do this in two somewhat different ways. The first was through aesthetic innovation and experimentation, which was Roger's emphasis. And the second was by posing hard questions about America's moral values, behavior, and politics, which was my emphasis. Um, and I think our attempt to find the meeting point between these two impulses, the aesthetic on the one hand and the civic on the other, is uh, basically the scratch that we uh, keep itching over and over for many, many years. Um, for the first 10 years, uh, we tried to find this meeting point simply in the plays themselves, including European avant-garde plays and often shocking new American works. But in 1990, uh, we took a step, a new step in the civic direction. We started knocking on doors up and down the 14th Street corridor where we were located, seeing who our neighbors were and asking how a bunch of theater artists might be helpful. <laughs> um, pretty simple. Um, inspired by what we heard, we initiated a range of arts programs in partnership with after-school clubs, homeless shelters, YMCAs, AIDS clinics, uh, churches, and many others. So jump forward to uh, 2005, 15 years later, uh, and by this point our community programs have grown to serve hundreds of kids, but that same season we also move into our beautiful new downtown home, uh, just a stone's throw from the National Mall in our, in our nation's capital. And we start to feel an uncomfortable misalignment. Um, we're no longer located in the neighborhood that provided the original inspiration for our community programs, and we're unable to convince our school partners to bring the students, the very students we are working with, to the shows on our stage because of the you know, simple barrier of basically too many four-letter words. Um, so jump ahead once more uh, to 2009, Woolley's 30th season, and after much dialogue and assessment and, uh, and gnashing of teeth, we decide that a new approach is needed, but we don't know what it is. And so in November of that year, we invite a range of Woolley family members, local citizens, and national colleagues for a day-long event entitled, Who's in Your Circle? Theater, Democracy, and Engagement in the 21st Century. Um, so from the various manifestos, debates, and soul-searching moments of that day, a new approach called connectivity emerges. And then over the course of the next year, it's developed even further through the EMC Innovation Lab. So the idea of connectivity is really simple. <laughs> it is to link 
our community programming directly to the shows on our stage by reaching out to ind individuals and groups who have a stake in the issues embedded in each play and by engaging them along with our entire audience in substantive dialogue inspired by the play. Actually, the key innovation is that we decide not to position connectivity as a subset of marketing, but to make it its own senior level de department and to charge it with drawing all of the other departments of the theater into a deeper connection with our art and our community. So um, to help you understand how big a shift this was for Woolly Mammoth, um, I want to outline the three core principles of connectivity as we define them at the EMC lab. And they are one, audience design. I'm, I'm specifying these in lieu of slides. Um, <laughs> audience design, two, point of entry, and three, total audience experience, for those of you taking notes. <laughs> so the first principle, audience design. So this implies that the design and composition of the audience for a show is as central as the design of the set, costumes, and lighting. Um, so the way this goes is that several months in advance of each show, um, our connectivity director, Jocelyn Prince, um, starts reaching out to various stakeholders in our community, sharing the play with them, seeing what resonates, asking if they might participate in various activities around the play, and whether they'll help promote it to their own networks. At the same time, she talks with the playwrights, director, and other artists involved in the production um, to, to ask how they might frame the dialogue around the play and who they would like to see in the audience. Um, she also explores the play with other staff members and community volunteers, and from all of this, a plan emerges for a, what we call a sweep of activities around each show. So a couple of quick examples um, for Luis Alfaro's play, Oedipus El Rey, uh, a play that deals with prison culture. We reached out to communities of ex-prisoners uh, and engaged them and our entire audience around the issue of recidivism. Uh, for Denai Guerrero's The Convert, uh, a play about the impact of Christianity in colonial Africa, uh, we reached out to the mayor's office on African affairs who sold out an entire house and hosted a post-show dialogue about African religions in Washington today. Um, and for each play, we might undertake anywhere from three or four to maybe a dozen or more of these efforts over the course of the four-week run. Um, so that's audience design. Second principle uh, we call point of entry. So the point of entry is just a simple question that defines the conversation that each production seeks to have with our community. It's intended to capture the hot point of intersection between the intentions of the artists and the interests and passions of people in our community. So for example, for Bruce um, Norris's Clyburn Park, a play I'm sure many of you know, our point of entry was the question, is your neighborhood Clyburn Park? <laughs> All of our marketing and communications and pre and post show activities were built around this simple idea of comparing your local neighborhood to the one in the play. Um, and as a practical matter, we've discovered that we often need two or three points of entry because different constituencies bring different passions to each play. So that's point of entry. The third principle um, we call total audience experience. And this suggests that we look for every possible point of contact with our audience and consider how it might be used to engage the conversation defined by the point of entry. So these contacts might include brochures, emails, websites, social media platforms, the lobby, the playbill, pre and post show activities, surveys, um, et cetera. So for example, for Mia Chung's play, You For Me For You, a play about two, two uh, North Korean sisters who attempt to escape to the United States, uh, we transformed our lobby into an art gallery um, for the work of North Korean dissident artist Song Byuk, whose personal uh, story of escaping from the New York, uh, escaping from North Korea, uh, <laughs> possibly that too, um, of, uh, illuminated the play perfectly. So the, the art show was promoted alongside the production, um, and Jocelyn arranged for Song to visit Washington for two weeks to engage with our artists and community, including diplomats, universities, policy groups like the Korea Economic Institute and local North Korean uh, defectors. Uh, many of our lobby activities are simpler, like choosing a label to stick on yourself or cracking open a fortune cookie to read a question. And we found um, that playful approaches like these can help get audience members talking with one another pretty easily. 
Um, we've also experimented with interactive technology platforms and found them especially effective for deliver delivering deeper layers of content from the artists themselves. So, um, implementing connectivity has not been easy, um, and every department has needed to adjust. Uh, the coordination with marketing is tricky because connectivity requires many different ticketing strategies and discounts. Um, our tech department has to install lobby displays precisely at the same time that they're finishing the set for the production. Uh, Jocelyn is constantly saying that she needs an assistant, um, and sometimes we run out of rooms in our building for all the discussions, forums, and receptions she wants to plan. But connectivity has contributed uh, to the vitality and diversity of our audience. It has given everyone in our organization a deeper sense of purpose, and it has helped to further differentiate Woolley from other theaters in our region. It's had a ripple effect on our play selection, on the evolution of our company of artists, and even, even on our way of rehearsing. So I'd like to conclude uh, with uh, one small cautionary note and one small piece of advice. So the cautionary note. Um, connectivity um, is not a strategy, or not necessarily a strategy, for increasing revenue, uh, for building overall audiences, or for sustaining our so-called institutions, a word I, I hate. Um, it's a strategy for bringing relevance to our art by strengthening its purpose and deepening its impact on the world around us. For Woolley, connectivity has helped us resolve a duality that lay at the heart of our theater from the time of our founding, and I believe it will be successful in the long run if it allows us to take even greater artistic risks with material that challenges our community even more intensely. And finally, the piece of advice, um, find your itch and keep scratching it. Um, our, our experience at Woolley suggests that fundamental dialogue about how to bring everything into alignment around our mission is never a waste of time, um, especially at moments of transition and struggle, and we've had plenty. Um, in developing our connectivity strategy, we kept asking ourselves what it would mean to genuinely fulfill the opening phrase of our mission statement, which is, quote, to ignite an explosive engagement between theater artists and the community. Ironically, uh, continuing to interrogate the core purpose that our organization began with uh, has proven to be our greatest source of innovation and adaptive capacity over time. Thank you.